Uh, thank you, Jonathan. Uh, Commissioner Modesh, uh, Commissioner Vela, uh, ambassadors, uh, ministers, uh, MEPs, uh, uh, and other important people. Um, first of all, can I say that uh, nearly 20 years ago now, uh, when I was a young man, uh, I had the privilege of, uh, of sailing a boat across the Atlantic. Uh, it was uh, 19 of the most memorable days of my life. Uh, on deck at night time on my own, with plenty of time to think, uh, looking over the side of a boat and looking up at the stars, uh, wondering and understanding and trying to understand uh, the extent and the vastness of the resource below me and above me. Uh, and it always struck me and has struck me since then um, uh, how amazing it is that we have seen such a lack of curiosity internationally uh, that has resulted in such a lack of understanding uh, of a resource that represents 70% uh, of, the, of the mass of the planet uh, in terms of its surface. Uh, and that is why now that I have the privilege and honour of being a Minister for Marine uh, and have a small role in doing something about that, uh, that it is really exciting for me to see two commissioners here, uh, to see a significant representation from Canada, from the US, uh, and indeed also uh, from Africa and South America uh, in a new uh, and uh, uh, uniform togetherness, if you like, in terms of our determination to understand and create a lot more knowledge about this vast, vast resource uh, that we really are only starting to understand, despite all of the technology that we have available to us. But much more importantly than that, that we need to understand to ensure that we protect and maintain the kind of life-preserving systems that oceans like the Atlantic Ocean provide for us. The kind of current flows that we take for granted that ensure that Ireland isn't under ice cover at this time of year because of uh, current flows uh, uh, that have been there in place for many years, uh, uh, like the Gulf Stream and so on. The kind of weather systems that, country, uh, that people who are now sailing or rowing across the Atlantic follow to ensure that they have the wind behind them rather than in front of them, that they take for granted because of the climate uh, that we uh, think we understand but are starting to realise is much more fragile than most people appreciate. And so the place to start is to actually look at the Atlantic not as an ocean that divides Europe and the United States and Canada and indeed Africa and South America, but actually a resource that should be pulling us together in common purpose to understand and to sustainably protect and exploit to the benefit of ourselves uh, uh, and future generations uh, what we can sustainably harness from this resource. Uh, and when I remember seeing the, the intelligence of porpoises and dolphins or the the scale of whales that were of a similar size and length to the boat that I was in. Uh, it is their resource too, uh, and their planet that we have a responsibility because of our influence to protect. Uh, and so, uh, we are now two years since the Galway Statement, uh, which was and still is a huge priority for the Irish government uh, and for, for Ireland uh, as, a, as a small country that finds itself uh, on the west coast uh, of Europe, uh, in the middle of the Atlantic, between the European Union uh, and the United States and Canada. Uh, and indeed, um, the prioritization of the Atlantic Ocean Alliance is not confined to the Department of Marine uh, or Fisheries in Ireland. Uh, it goes right into the Prime Minister's office, uh, who was very much present and involved in the Galway Statement, and still asks me on a regular basis how is it developing? What are we doing? What are the practical consequences uh, of what we signed two years ago on the 15th of May? Uh, and I want to congratulate uh, the EU, the Commission in particular, for the leadership on this. 
uh, as well as Canada and the US authorities uh, for the very concrete evidence of real progress in moving forward in a well-prepared implementation of Galway. Uh, the presence here today of so many senior influencers, I think, is evidence of that in itself. The focus today and tomorrow on the Horizon 2020 project awards in support of the Galway Statement is something I want to acknowledge and congratulate the EU uh, um, Commission, DG's uh, Research and Innovation and Mare uh, for establishing and prioritising. Uh, as a minister from Ireland, uh, uh, it is uh, uh, important for me uh, that I uh, recognise and point to the historical high level of participation of Irish research groups, both in the public and private sectors, who are contributing to all of the funded projects. Uh, this scale of Irish research performance ref reflects the continued national prioritisation of support for marine research and innovation over the last two, two decades, where we have quite simply transformed the infrastructure and human capacity in Ireland in this area completely. And people like Peter Heffernan, who is here today, who is head of the Marine Institute in Ireland, uh, is a, uh, has been a real leader in that journey. Um, my government has afforded the highest political focus on marine policy and sustainable development goals in our integrated maritime policy and plan which is called Harnessing Our Ocean Wealth, where research and innovation is at the core uh, of our collective whole-of-government approach. And that policy document was signed off and developed by nine different departments in government, as opposed to simply one. So the collaboration that we're seeing here internationally is certainly something that we are trying to replicate within government uh, in my country. An example of the, uh, the ambition um, was seen this week uh, when we um, are finalising a multi-million euro scientific broadband cabling system for our Galway Bay National Ocean Energy Test and Demonstration Site, creating a, a unique test and demonstration capacity for both ocean energy, quarter-scale prototypes, as well as full suite and, and oceanographic sensor technology devices. This truly creates a smart bay system, and we will be delighted to share this capacity and knowledge uh, with device and instrument innovators across the community represented by the Atlantic Ocean Research Alliance. Through our government's, our government's support, this cabled ocean observation system is extendable out onto our Atlant Atlantic continental shelf, and we believe this will be an extremely important component of the type of ocean observation system envisaged by the Galway Statement. I'm very pleased to acknowledge the coordination role uh, that will be performed by our National Marine Institute uh, in the BG14 project established uh, to support the European Commission in the implementation of the Atlantic Ocean uh, Research Alliance, together with NOAA and DFO uh, as lead partners for the US and Canada, respectively. I had the great pleasure of meeting uh, John Bell from the EU, uh, Trevor uh, Schweinfarger uh, from DFO Canada, uh, and Craig McLean uh, from NOAA in the US, uh, uh, who are charged with leading the implementation of Galway during the course of the Galway Statement Seabed Mapping Workshop held in Dublin Castle last December. At that workshop, I signalled Ireland's commitment to the implementation phase of the Galway process and specifically the provision of ship time on our national research vessel, the Celtic Explorer, uh, operated by the Marine Institute, uh, to support initiatives agreed under the Galway mechanisms. To this end, I'm delighted today to announce, in partnership with Committer, Commissioner uh, Modash and Vela, uh, that the Celtic Explorer will undertake a historic transatlantic seabed mapping expedition in early June from St. John's, Newfoundland to Galway. That's three th nearly 3,200 kilometers uh, of, uh, for the first time ever, uh, we will see a trans-ocean seabed map project that will be completed uh, during this summer. Information from the seafloor is vital to the sustainable management of the Atlantic, as well as to important industries such as fisheries, aquaculture, and tourism. 
Ireland has developed a world-leading reputation for seabed mapping and is also very committed to the implementation of the Galway Statement. And so I'm delighted to put at the disposal of the team Ireland's state-of-the-art uh, research vessel, uh, the Celtic Explorer. Okay. It has been said before, but I think it's worth uh, repeating, that deep sea is one of our last uh, frontiers uh, yet uh, to be fully explored and understood. And I think we owe it to ourselves and to generations that will follow uh, to use the technology and the innovation and the resources, quite frankly, that our countries and our continents have to build a better understanding so that we can predict what is likely to happen in the future and prepare responses to it, as well as responding to the immediate crises that we face in areas like ocean litter and ocean pollution that have been mentioned by the two commissioners previous. So I want to thank everybody here for their commitment to this new thought process on the marine, which is more ambitious, I think, than we have ever seen before. And I want to uh, reinforce uh, the message that the commitment from my country, from the very, very top in government, is extremely strong to this project. And we look forward to working with all of the partners to making sure that it's effective and, and fruitful. Thank you very much.